Today we're going to talk about the one photography framework that beginners hate but experts love. And this is not to presume I'm some sort of expert, I'm just a guy who takes photos. But it was upon realizing this deeper principle, embracing this framework, and applying it to my photos in an easy and practical way that I was able to level up my photography. So I'll share with you all the good stuff today. But you have to promise not to click off and give me a chance to explain. Ready? The photography framework that beginners hate but experts love is the rule of thirds. I know what you're thinking, don't exit this video, you promised. Why beginners hate this? If you heard me say rule of thirds and felt the temptation to vomit, trust me, I'm right there with you. But don't worry, we'll shed some new light on this concept today. People hate the rule of thirds because they're tired of fucking hearing it. I am too. Everyone and their mom talks about the rule of thirds, why it's good, why it's useful, and why you should use it. And if you read and watched enough stuff about photography, you're probably tired of hearing the same things over and over again. That's understandable. Another reason why people hate the rule of thirds is because beginners think they're above it. The rule of thirds is treated like an elementary framework, a basic thing, a basic concept, and only noobs use this. And so a lot of people are insecure with identifying as a beginner. Therefore, they can't use the rule of thirds because that's something only newbies use and I don't want to be a noob, so I'm not going to use it. Make sense? So people hate the rule of thirds for two main reasons. One, it's talked about too damn much and we're tired of hearing it. Two, it's associated with beginners and I don't want to be a beginner. The thing is, until you truly understand the rule of thirds, you will always be a noob because experts love it. So let's get into that. Why experts love it. Experts love the rule of thirds because experts love the basics. You see, there's a common misunderstanding that when you reach a certain level, you all of a sudden stop using amateur, elementary, basic moves. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Experts do the basics, and if anything, focus on the basics more because they understand how important they are. Plus, all the higher level skills stem from the basics. So quite frankly, there is nothing but the basics. Let's take, for example, basketball. There's a really good clip of Kobe saying how the pull-up jumper is the most important shot in basketball. And if you work, practice, and focus on the pull-up jumper, you'll be able to do all the other moves because all the other moves kind of stem from it. But the jumper itself doesn't change. So you don't see someone like Kobe or Curry stop practicing their jump shot just because they've reached a certain level. If anything, they practice it more because they understand how important it is. And these basic skills masters make look elite. It's like watching art in motion. The point is, experts don't stop working on the basics, they focus on the basics. So if you're a photographer and you're tempted to think in a way that, oh, the rule of thirds is a basic thing and I don't want to use it, I'm not going to use it, understand that's just your ego getting in the way. But if you can embrace this concept and use whatever is available to you to get the best photo possible, then all the power to you. There's a common phrasing I like that states, amateurs focus on tools. And I want to add a second part to this, which says experts focus on the basics. So amateurs focus on tools, experts focus on the basics. We know this, right? People love camera gear. They're obsessed with new camera this, new lens this, and they think that by getting a certain new piece of equipment, it'll make them a better photographer. Then they get the thing, become validated for their purchase with the tool itself, and never go out and take photos. We've all been through some version or cycle of this, so it should sound familiar. Meanwhile, more experienced photographers understand that getting new gear isn't really going to change their photography much. It might allow them to do different things that they couldn't do before, but overall, not really. And many of the great photographers of the 20th century shot on cameras that would be considered junk today. They used what was available to them and focused on photography itself. The boring things, the elementary things, the talked about too much things. The basics. Because they understood that if they wanted to improve their photography, they had to focus on the basics. So, fantastic. Basics are great, Andre. But how does this apply to the rule of thirds itself? Let's get into that. What does this framework actually teach us? To understand the rule of thirds from a new angle, we must understand its purpose. Because contrary to what many people think, it's not simply just dividing your frame into nine rectangles and calling it a day. That's just what it seems like on the surface, but there's a deeper relationship here. Let me ask you a question. What is the rule of thirds actually trying to teach us? That's an extremely important question to ask because most people will look at the tool or the framework and ignore the inner lesson. But if you understand the lesson, you'll be able to apply the rule of thirds anywhere. You see, the rule of thirds teaches us four main things. Proportions, spacing, symmetry, and how to fill your frame up. 
Let's break each one of these down. Proportion means the size of our objects in relation to the frame and each other. Spacing means the placement of our objects in relation to the frame and each other. Symmetry means not just simply matching opposing sides, but an even balance or distribution of weight within your frame. And filling up our frame means making good use of the space given to us. Proportions, spacing, symmetry or weight, and filling up our frame. I think most photographers would agree these are important. If this made sense to you, then you might realize that no matter what you do, whenever you're taking a photo, you are using some form of the rule of thirds. Let me explain further. The rule of thirds divides your frame into two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. However, technically speaking, you can divide your frame into an infinite number of horizontal and vertical lines. And then you'll be using rule of sixes, rule of nines, rule of one hundreds, rule of one thousands. But you are still using some version of the rule of thirds. And as long as your subjects can be compartmentalized into some square or place in the frame, you are using this principle, which is almost always. And that's why experts love this. Because once you realize this, you'll understand that no matter what you do, you will be using some version, shape, or form of the rule of thirds. Just like a basketball player, no matter what shot they take, they are using some version of the jump shot. And it's not like you can just suddenly stop using this because you're too good for it now. And so now hopefully you won't dismiss the rule of thirds as basic or elementary, but you'll start to think things like, hey, if I just use this and use this well, I can take a good photo of literally anything. If we're always going to be using some version of the rule of thirds, why not learn to use it well use it to our advantage and take better photos. Let's talk about how to do that. How to use this practically. Now that we understand why beginners hate this, why experts love this, why it's important, let's talk about how to use this practically. And don't worry, I'm not gonna tell you to divide your frame into nine rectangles because quite frankly, I don't even do that. For me, putting anything on the screen besides the picture itself interferes with what I'm seeing. And so I prefer to use no lines, no histograms, no leveler. Instead, we'll look at a few different frameworks which are my favorite ways of applying this technique. I do this primarily by focusing on the core principles themselves. Remember, what does the rule of thirds actually teach us? It teaches us the relationship between proportions, spacing, symmetry, and how we fill our frame up, and that every inch of our image has relevance. So how do we apply that? By asking one simple question. How? am I filling up my frame? This is literally one of my favorite questions to ask whenever I'm taking photos. Because it takes all these concepts, puts them into one simple question, and makes it easy to understand and apply. How am I filling up my frame? Imagine your photo as a two-dimensional empty cup. There's only so much space in it. Only so many things can go into it and many things must be left out. And if you're filling your cup with anything but the liquid that's supposed to be in it, it will taste nasty. Like imagine if I added some water here, some grass here, some tequila here, some hot sauce here, some mud over here, I'd create an abomination. But if I added the right ingredients for the perfect drink that worked together, it would taste amazing. So the world has provided you a set of ingredients to play with, and it's up to you to make them work together. Think of your frame as an empty cup. What you choose to put in each section of that frame will affect the overall taste of the image. So this can mean using empty space, adding an extra subject here, or maybe not even using an ingredient to begin with. And the real challenge for a photographer is to use all of these ingredients and make them work in such a way where it makes sense. Does that make sense? So this applies to all of photography, from street photography to sunset gradients to everyday candid photos to landscapes. If you just ask yourself, how am I filling up my frame? Your photos will get that much better. Another practical phrase that I like that does basically the same thing is no wasted space meaning every single nanometer of my image has to be filled with something that matters, helps or contributes towards the image or just not be included at all. And if there's something that's in the frame that is not helping the photo, it's hurting it. And so by repeating to myself, no wasted space, I can remind myself to be conscious of what I'm putting inside my drink. And this all ties back to the rule of thirds. You see, the rule of thirds is just an easy practical way for us to apply these four principles. But if you follow the root principles of the rule of thirds itself, you can apply the rule of thirds without having to think about the rule of thirds. Because remember, whether you're liking it or not, you're using some form of the rule of thirds. It may be the rule of thousands, it may be the rule of ten thousands, but it's always there. So that's the photography framework that beginners hate, but experts love. I hope this was able to reframe how you think about the rule of thirds in a practical way. And if this was helpful, please share this with a friend who might also find this helpful. Also, check out The Sinking Sun, my new photography zine, if you're interested. There's only a few copies of this, so it won't be here for long. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you in another video. Peace.